Hello, welcome back learners to the channel Unify Learning. Let's continue with class 12 psychology, self and personality, part 6 psychodynamic approach. So conti to continue with this, let's talk about the psychodynamic approach. It is given by Sigmund Freud and it was the most popular approach to the study of personality. It used hypnosis, free association, dream analysis and analysis of er errors as well to understand the internal functioning of the personality or the physical or emotional problems. Levels of consciousness includes, so further he, uh, Sigmund Freud divide the level of brain or personality into the level of consciousness. So consciousness uh, includes first that is conscientious. Conscientious is basically uh, if I say that thought, feeling and actions of which people are aware. So for example, you are attending a lecture and that is your, that is you are present there and you are attending it. That is you are aware of. Next is pre-conscious. So pre-conscious is basically that you are aware but the condition is if you pay attention to it. So for example, you are taking a lecture but your uh, friend nearby sitting uh, you is uh, maybe talking but you are focusing on what your teacher is telling. Okay, not on the gossips. Unconscious level is when you are not aware of that situation or mental activity that people are unaware of. For example, you are in a class and some of your friend or one of your friend is having the lunch. So, you can get to know through the smell. But you are unaware as maybe later on you will see that I had smelled like someone was eating lunch but you didn't pay attention to it so you were not aware as of because you were taking a lecture by a teacher so this is how these level of consciousness works let's talk about the consciousness in more unconsciousness in more detail as it is basically more focused uh, freud focused more on the sexual desires desires as uh, if I say that it cannot be expressed openly and therefore are repressed. We will study about repression in detail further as it is the defense mechanism used by the individual. Constant struggle to socially to find a socially acceptable way to express unconscious awareness as the person has some sexual desires but he or she cannot express it. So that's why he has to adopt the repression uh, defense mechanism and it leads to the constant struggle and sometimes unsuccessful resolution of conflict results in abnormal behavior as well. Okay, let's talk about the approaches to consciousness unconsciousness so free association dream analysis analysis of er errors these all are the are the methods or we can say the therapies to make the balance between the unaccepted that desires and as according to you as you feel like that society will not accept you so that's why you will say that it is I have to, uh, I, I cannot express it. So that's why you will repress that. And this is how, these are the ways or approaches through which you can, you can, uh, you can make balance between that un, uh, between that unconscious to the conscious level. As you can see here that psychoanalysis is a therapeutic procedure and the basic goal which is to bring repressed unconscious material to consciousness okay i hope this is clear to you and let's continue with the next one structure of personality so freud gave an imaginary division of mind it believed in internal dynamics which can be inferred from the ways people behave so he uh, three competing forces that is id ego and super ego so let's talk about that it it is it works on the pleasure principle further you can read it i'm just highlighting and uh, making you understand with the 
points that are very much important and you should even mention these points in your exams and you will definitely going to get the marks if you mention it with an example as psychology works on examples if you will not if you are not able to correlate the theories and the concepts with the examples you are not able to score much good marks in your exams okay so as it works on the pleasure principle and it is basically energized by instinctual forces that is life instinct and that is called libido and death instinct and uh, it is just like not very um, it is not um, it does not make you uh, the patient it is very demanding unrealistic and does not care for moral values at all for example you had a feeling of hunger so if you feel like that i should your mother has hidden that uh, packet of biscuits you will not think of that moral values and you will just go and have it okay so that is the it just works on the pleasure principle like a uh, food or uh, maybe a hunger i could say that hunger or you if you are thirsty so that is all the pleasure principle the examples include that okay next is the ego ego uh, includes or it works on the reality principle it tries to guide or direct the id towards more appropriate ways of behaving for example as we have talked about that uh, in the previous example that you have a feeling of hunger to eat that biscuit your mother had hidden at some place you will go and find it and eat it in the id if we talk about the id but when the ego is developed what you will do you will have a some kind of reality prince you will your uh, personality will work on some kind of reality principle and it will make you more patient and reasonable that if i should eat or if i if i should not eat what are the you will just try to compare that okay let's talk about the super ego super ego is the basic or the moral branch of your mental functioning so it has a really big role or major role in your personality it tells the id and ego whether gratification in a particular instance is ethical this is a very very important point when we talk about the super ego and uh, and moreover if we say that life instinct is uh, dominant in human behavior as if some many times we just works on our instinct and doesn't even more thought about that uh, what will be the uh, outcome of that okay let's talk about the defense mechanism now you have made uh, now you have some kind of a uh, uh, anxiety and you want to resolve it so we take many kind of mechanism to resolve it but we are not actually aware of that what kind of defense mechanism you have used to understand this let's talk about the defense mechanism in detail we are going to talk about some of them as repression projection denial reaction formation and rationalization let's talk about the definitions given in your books so repression is anxiety provoking behavior or thoughts are totally dismissed by unconscious let's talk about the example of it to understand that in more uh, way on in more uh, easiest way okay so during the oedipus complex aggressive thoughts about the same sex parents are repressed as it is very obvious we'll talk about the oedipus complex that what happens actually so um, you just get uh, you you can just note it down this example and we will talk about uh, this uh, oedipus complex in uh, more detail and uh, later on okay next is projection projection is people attributes their own traits to other let's talk about this so projection you might have some uh, we can say that uh, you might ha hate someone but your super ego tells you that such hatred is unacceptable so what you will do is you can solve the problem by believing that they hate you okay so you have projected your thoughts on to the other as if you love if as sometimes opposite can happen that if you love someone so you feel like that other person also loves you but it is very much 
in dilemma situation that you cannot do that and that is a kind of defense mechanism used by many people in many situations next is denial as a person totally uh, denial is a person totally refuses to accept reality this happens many times in a person's life that in a very big situations and if any very much big uh, health issues are uh, in uh, health problems are uh, you are into so you suppose you try to avoid that and deny that situation for example a smokers may refuse to admit uh, that smoking is bad for their health as they would say that it is my anxiety booster and there are many other reasons okay so you can just take any one uh, uh, any one uh, a mechanism to just avoid that as denial just includes just one kind of behavior or one kind of that reason you just tries and just in that way you just deny that situation okay let's talk about the another one um uh, reaction formation. So, reaction formation uh, is a person defends against anxiety by adopting behaviors opposed to his or her feelings. Let's talk about that. Okay. Okay. So, reaction formation, if I talk about, that is not given example. Okay. Uh, so, let's talk about that. For example, uh, you just try to defend against anxiety by adopting behavior opposite to his or her true feelings. So, you just basically defending your own anxiety, defending your own anxiety and by adopting any other kind of uh, behavior opposite to your true feelings. Okay, next is the rationalization. A person tries to make unreasonable feelings or behavior seem reasonable and acceptable okay so let's talk about that as a rationalization includes a person tries to make unreasonable feelings or behavior seem reasonable and acceptable as you just tries to make another kind of situation and uh, you just frame it in another way that is different from the real situation but you make it more reasonable and acceptable by others okay let's talk about the stages of personality five stages of personality given by freud and uh, let's talk about that in detail so let's talk about the first stage that is oral stage it uh, the age is infancy and uh, pleasure seeking place is the mouth that is feeding thumb sucking babbling okay basic feeling about the world are established next is the anal stage that is the two or uh, between two or three years of age so uh, pleasure seeking place was uh, the anus as experiencing pleasure in moving their bowels as learned to respond to the society basis for conflict between the id that is desire for babyish pleasure but and the ego demands for adult control behavior as for example uh, the baby wants to have that babyish behavior for example having mouth feeding thumb sucking but the another uh, the ego wants uh, that e uh, ego is demanding the baby or the child to behave in a manner that is required by the adult or as they have grown up let's talk about the phallic stage phallic stage uh, is between four to five years of age and uh, the uh, pleasure seeking or uh, center is the phallus that is a uh, Development begins to realize the difference between males and females. Become aware of sexuality and the sexual relationship between their parents. Okay, and phallic stage also includes two type of uh, complexes that is Oedipus and Electra complex. We are going to study about that in detail as I have told you. Okay, so next is the latency stage. Latency stage includes uh, the age between 7 uh, to the puberty. As you uh, the grow, 
the growth of the body uh, as but sexual urges are relatively inactive and energy is challenged into social or achievement uh, related activities okay you focus on that side not on the pre not like the previous stage as you were focusing on the uh, failures okay next is the genital that is uh, age uh, above puberty and pleasure seeking center is the genitals so uh, development occurs in uh, attains a maturity in psychosexual development sexuality fear and repressed feelings of earlier stage that was in the uh, phallus has been developed again okay and uh, learn to deal with members of the opposite gender uh, or sex in a society in a socially learn to deal with the members of opposite sex in socially and uh, sexually mature way let's talk about the oedipus complex in detail okay uh, so oedipus complex occurs in male and uh, it shows that love for mother okay uh, a hostility towards the father and fear of punishment by the father castration castration by the father accepts his father's relationship with his mother and more and later on what happens is except his father's relationship with his mother and models uh, his own behavior after his father but electro complex is found in the females and females attaches her love to the father and tries to symbolically marry him and raise a family and I, but later on to accept uh, later on the ident later on girls or females identify with her mother and copies her behavior as a means of getting or getting or sharing in her father's affection so there is a difference between both males and female complexes you just go through it i have already i have explained to you and if you will read the language it is very simple and i uh, hope you will get it if you will read it twice but how to resolve these complex to resolve these complex identification with the same parent same sex parent second thing they can do is giving up sexual feeling for opposite sex parents okay next is regression occurs when a person's resolution of a problems at any stage of development is less than adequate as they try to uh, make a reasonable uh, a reasonable thought to it but if they are not able to then the regression occurs and people uh, display behavior typical of a less mature uh, stage of development okay let's talk about the post freudian approach or neo analytic or post freudian view so uh, it includes a uh, three or four psychologists as they have talked about so carl jung has focused on aims and aspirations are the uh, major source of energy so they saw human beings as guided by aims and aspirations and further analytical psychology personality consists of competing forces and structures within the individual i am just reading the lines okay let me explain you that carl jung has focused on that personality is competing with forces and structure within the individual as uh, they are dealing with the society they are trying to make a balance between the needs of society between the individual and reality as well further collective consciousness unconsciousness sorry collective unconsciousness consisting of archetypes archetypes is basically the uh, Pre primordial images as of uh, some kind of uh, finding myths and dreams and arts of all mankind okay uh, so uh, he also talked about that self strive for unity and oneness was seen in the human beings and uh, once person and collective unconscious must is needed and must learn to live harmony as these three four things are very important when we are talking about the carl jung aims and aspiration are important and balance between the demand of society or between the individual and reality collective unconsciousness strive for unity and oneness and the last one that we're going to talk about is live uh, they now focusing all that we'll say that learn to live harmony with it okay 
so harmonious life is very much important in human being as a uh, it's very uh, really needed okay let's talk about the Car uh, karen horne and uh, he talks about the optimism basically so optimistic view of human life with emphasis on human growth and self actualization so these were the basic uh, two points he has talked about he has also talked about the women as inferior as women uh, women uh, as inferior and he has talked about the treatment of uh, women as inferior and psychological disorders were caused by disturbed interpersonal relationship during child this is the very very important point as a uh, uh, you are uh, as you all are in 12th class you will not able to understand this as much but when you will grow up and uh, if you take psychology in your further subjects uh, in graduation you will able to understand that uh, that how it is affecting okay if you uh, do a uh, case studies on childhood and uh, child and how this is affecting this is very much major issue seen in these days and uh, he also talked about the basic anxiety as when parents uh, behavior toward the child is indifferent discouraging and erratic the child feels insecure and a feeling called basic anxiety results deep resentment towards parents or basic hostility occur due to anxiety so this leads of course if you if that issue is not resolved at that stage only then it will of course increase and uh, it it is going to affect many things in the life of a child okay let's talk about the alfred adler and uh, if we talk about him so he has talked about the uh, individual psychology as human being uh, human behavior is purposeful and goal directed purposeful and goal directed second thing is personal goals every individual has his personal goals and inferiority complex is seen as the feeling of guilt every individual suffer from the feeling of inadequacy and guilt that is inferiority complex which arise from childhood so alfred edler has talked about that okay so uh, let's see that uh, lifestyle and social interest source of energy attainment of personal goals so we have talked about that individual psychology individual psychology means every human being every human beings human behavior is purposeful and goal directed second thing we are going to talk about we have talked about this uh, personal goals and inferiority complex okay so let's talk about uh, the next uh, uh, eric uh, eric uh, form okay so the human concerns he has talked about the human concerns so social orientation viewed human being as social beings who could be understood in terms of relationship with others this is the very very important point that human beings are known as or considered as social beings everyone needs everyone needs one or another person and they are too much affected by the relationship with others as character traits character traits are the personality developed from our experiences with other individuals and psychological qualities such as growth of growth from our own experiences of potentialities and uh, results from uh, a desire for freedom okay you can just read it out the another points uh, next is eric erikson search for identity so he has talked about the rational conscious ego processes are uh, plays a major role in personality development as he has also stated said that he has also said that the development is viewed as a lifelong process and ego identity is granted a central place in the process of personality development identity crisis occurs at a uh, puberty age if the direction and if the child is not able to identify uh, or uh, not able to uh, take uh, his uh, right decision and uh, not able to identify as if i say that identity crisis is if for example a person feels like that i should be that ideal girl and if that um, 
I should not have that pimples or I should look uh, not fatty. So this occurs. As the boy will see, would think that why uh, my voice is not that much uh, high pitched or why this is not happening. So it, this kind of changes occurs with the time. Body uh, changes. Okay. But not at the same time. So you should not compare with your other peers. Okay. So identity crisis at the central, uh, at the adolescent age and uh, young people must generate for themselves a central perspective and a direction that can give them a meaningful sense of unity and purpose. Okay. Next, we are going to talk about the criticism to the psychodynamic theories as they lack a rigorous scientific basis and another one is they use sim small and typical individual as samples as if we talk about the psychology and any other kind of uh, theories development. So we need to take a random sample and a broad sample. Actually, we cannot just take as uh, Freud has used just males as the prototype of all human personality development. This cannot be done. So, again, okay, uh, the concepts are not properly defined as this was the criticism of the psychodynamic approach. Okay, learners, this was the psychodynamic approach, including all the theories and criticism as well. I hope this is very much clear to you. And if there is any doubt, you can just comment in the comment box. I'm always there to uh, resolve your all the issues. Uh, so learners, stay home, stay safe, keep learning and thank you.